So we're looking at our ninth unit, which is linear and quadratic inequalities. And our first topic is 9.1, linear inequalities in two variables. That's on pages 464 to 475. Your curriculum outcome is to expand and demonstrate understanding of inequalities, including one variable quadratic inequalities and two variable linear and quadratic inequalities. And our lesson objectives today, number one, to learn how to sketch a linear inequality. Number two, to learn when to use a dotted line or a solid line when sketching an inequality. Number three, to learn how to determine which side of the line you should be shading. And number four, to solve problems that involve linear inequalities. So recall that inequalities basically give you answers that are a range of values instead of one single value. So when we're saying your answer is x is less than or equal to negative one, we're saying if we were to draw a number line, and this is negative one, we're saying it's everything to the left of negative one, everything less than, but it can be equal to negative one as well, so we used to put in a solid dot right there. If we're talking about x is greater than four, then if we had four on our number line, we're going everything to the right hand side, everything that's greater than four, but it's not equal to four, so we'd use an open circle as, as opposed to a, a closed in circle. With a linear inequality, you're looking for values for both x and y that make the inequality true. So you might have something like 2x minus 4y has to be greater than or equal to uh, 12. Well, you're looking for any x value and any y value that when you plug it in there, you're going to get uh, an answer that's greater than or equal to 12. And since there are going to be an infinite number of answers, we can represent the solution by graphing the line. So we'll graph the 2x minus 4y equals 12, and then shading the area that lies that the solution lies within. And that's called the solution reason, region. Sorry. And things you should know. So you need to know how to graph a line. Number two, you need to know that we're going to use a dashed line with a less than or greater than. So that's instead of that open circle when we're talking about the number line. And we're going to use a solid line when we're talking about uh, less than or equal to and greater than or equal to signs. Number three, you need to choose which way to shade. And to do that, you choose a test point. Uh, a point that's a point that's not on the line. You plug it into your inequality and see if the inequality is true. If it is true, you shade the side that, that includes that point. And if it's not true, then you don't shade that side. You shade the other way. So here's an example. We're going to graph 4x plus 2y is greater than 10. So in order to do that, we have to first know how to graph 4x plus 2y is equal to 10. And that is the line. And then the inequality part is the shading part. So the easiest way, I think, to, to graph a line is to just choose the x and the y-intercept, especially when it's already written in this form. So to find the x-intercept, we let y equal 0. Well, if we're to do that, if we let y equal 0, we just get 4x equaling 10. And so that means x is going to be 10 divided by 4. And that is 2 and a half. Um, if we find the y-intercept, that's when x equals 0. And so when x equals 0, that means y is going to be equal to 5. So now when we graph this thing, we have two points. We have 2.5 comma 0. So if we call this 2.5 comma 0. And then we also have five, 0 comma 5. So somewhere up here. Then we have a line. Now, this is a greater than sign. And it's not an equal to sign, so it's a dotted line that goes through that point and that point. Now, obviously, you will be doing using rulers and graph paper, but uh, this is just to give you an idea of what we're going to do. Now, we need to choose which way to shade, so we're going to choose a test point. Now, the easiest point, I think, which is always the easiest point, uh, is 0, 0 to plug in. So if we plug in a 0, we get, you know, 4 times 0 plus 2 times 0 is greater than 10. So is 0 greater than 10? No, 0 is not greater than 10, which means that we're not going to shade towards 0, 0, because if this point 0, 0 is not part of the solution, then any point on this side of the line is not going to be part of the solution. So that means your answer is going to be everything on this side of the line. So you would just shade in. So any point that you put in that lies in this region, so on the right-hand side of that oblique line, will give you an answer that is greater than 10 if you were to plug in x and y. Here's our final example. It says, find the possible combinations of tile and stone that can be used to make a mosaic if tile costs $2.50 a square foot and stone costs $6 a kilogram and the total bud budget is $150. So if I said X is going to be the amount of tile and Y is going to be the amount of stone, then the inequality that we're going to create here is $2.50 times X which is to, um, the amount of tile multiplied by the, pri the price of the tile plus $6 times y. And that has to be less than 
or equal to 150 because we're talking about a budget. So now we can graph this thing. And to graph it, we're going to draw our coordinate plane. But knowing that we are talking about amount of tile and amount of stone, we're only going to be working in the first quadrant because we can't have negative amounts of tile or negative amounts of stone. So to graph this thing, again, I just set up a little table, x and y. So when I let x equal 0, I get 6y is 150, so that is equal to 25. And when y equals 0, I get uh, 250x equals 150, and that equals 60. So again, I'm not even really going to put a scale in here, but I know that x is 60 when y is equal to 0. So we're looking at something right about here. That would be 60 comma 0. And something like this would be about uh, 0 comma 25. So the line that we have runs straight through here from that point to that point. Now it's a solid line because it can equal 150. And now we're going to choose our test point to see which way we shade. Um, we're going to plug in again, 0, 0 isn't on the line, so we might as well plug that in. Uh, if I plug in a 0 here and a 0 there, I get 0 is less than or equal to, equal to 150, and that's true. It is less than 150. So we're really just shading in this area right here. And again, because it's a real life situation, we can't have um, tile amounts that are less than zero or the amount of stone that, which is going to be less than zero, then I'm also just staying within the first quadrant. So this is the region where any of your answers, any combination of x's and y's would be less than or equal to 150. So in summary, you need to know how to graph a line. Once you do that, this thing becomes a whole lot easier. Remember that the line will either be solid if it's a greater than or equal to sign or less than or equal to sign, or it might be a dashed line if it's just less than or greater than. Uh, to determine which way to shade, make sure that you choose a test point that isn't on your line, that's key. Plug it into your inequality and see if it satisfies that inequality. And if it does satisfy that inequality, you'll shade towards that point. If it doesn't satisfy it, you're gonna shade away from it. So your assignment is on pages 472 to 475. Good luck and we'll see you in class.